Hello, welcome back to my another session. In this session, I will talk about the function of an ecosystem. As you all know that in the particular area, all the living components of the environment, they are interlinked, interdependent and interconnected with the non-living component of the environment. So, these living component and the non-living component of the environment, they interconnected, interdependent in such a way they work as an unit. And such unit is known as the ecological unit or also known as the ecosystem. The ecosystem is the highest level of integration of environment. This is the highest level of integration of environment. It means that in ecosystem, there are several members from the producer to decomposers. And all these members are interconnected, interdependent only because of for the energy only because of for the food. So, all the members of the ecosystem are interlinked, interdependent because of the dependency of food energy or the food or also known as nutrient. And another is the energy. So, all the members of the ecosystem are interconnected to each other because of the food and the energy. So, these living component and the non-living components are interdependent, interconnected in such a way that there is the flow of food and there is the flow of energy. So the flow of food and the flow of energy in the ecosystem, these two are the functional aspect of the ecosystem. So today's topic is function of an ecosystem. It indicates that how the nutrient flow in the ecosystem, how energy flow in the ecosystem. So first come to the flow of food. Flow of food. As you all know that in the ecosystem, the first member is the producers. Producers means the green plant. They have the capacity only to prepare the carbohydrate food matter for the all members of the ecosystem. The all the green plants, all the green plants, these are known as the producers. They produce food from the raw matter like carbon dioxide and water in presence of chlorophyll and the sunlight. So, in presence of chlorophyll and sunlight, the green plants prepare the carbohydrate food and store inside it. Such producer become the food of another member of the ecosystem known as the herbivores. And these herbivores become the food of another member of the ecosystem known as the carnivore or known as the fast carnivore. And such fast carnivore become the food of the another member, maybe the second carnivore. Likewise, such second carnivore become the food of the another carnivore or you may say that this is the top carnivore. 
so that is the flow of food energy so actually the energy comes from the sunlight that's why the sun is known as the ultimate source of the energy sun is the ultimate source of the energy because of the presence of sunlight and the chlorophyll pigment the producer or the green plant produce the carbohydrate food matter and such food become the food of the herbivores and such herbivores is known as the secondary producer so these are the secondary producer and the producers are known as the primary producer and such secondary producers these are also known as the primary consumer such primary consumer become the food of the fast carnivores and these are known as the second or secondary consumer such secondary consumer become the food of the second carnivore or the third consumer so like this there is the dependency of the all member of the ecosystem for the food energy or for the food so because so because of the feeding so herbivores here it feeds the producer because of the food and such herbivores being eaten by the carnivores and such carnivores or the fast carnivore feed on the herbivores and such fast carnivore is being eaten by the second carnivores so there is the relationship because of the food there is the relationship the sequence of relationship because of the eating and being eaten by the others so because of the feeding and become the food of the others in the ecosystem all the members there is the relationship the sequence relationship which is known as the food chain so the flow of food you can study it under two heads one may be the food chain and another is the food web so in ecosystem such sequence of feeding and become the food of the others it is uh, it doesn't operate in sequence manner actually all the different food chains are interconnected to each other and which forms the food web but in this video i will discuss about only the food chain so up to this we clear that in the ecosystem there are the several members and only the green plants are the producer they have the capacity to produce the food for the other members of the ecosystem that's why other members depend on the producers so the herbivores is the primary consumers they first consume the producers and such herbivores are the primary consumer become the food of the first carnivore or the secondary consumer so there is the feeding and being eaten by the others eating and being eaten by the others so because of the eating and being eaten by the others there is the relationship among the different members of the ecosystem and which is known as the food chain so up to this we clear about what is food chain food chain it is the sequential relationship interdependency because of the food so food prepared by the primary producers and such food become the food of the herbivores 
and the herbivores again it become the food of the first carnivore and subsequently at last the top carnivores feed the second carnivores here so the food chain we can classify into two types the uh, so two types of food chains is there one is the grazing grazing food chain and another is the detritus detritus food chain so grazing food chain and the detritus food chain so the grazing food chain which starts from the producers or the green plants and detritus food chain which starts from the dead bodies of the organism so first start the grazing food chain so in the grassland and in the forest ecosystem or in the pond ecosystem there is the grazing food chain so grazing food chain which starts from the green plants and such green plants become the food of the herbivore and this herbivore become the food of the fast carnivore and such fast carnivore become the food of the second carnivore and subsequently it become the food of the top carnivore so this type of food chain is known as the grazing food chain so the this food chain it depends on the sunlight this is the very important because such the the sustainability of such food chain depends on the influx of energy energy actually enter into through the green plants in ecosystem so this is the door of an ecosystem i told in my previous video so the green plants become the door through which the energy enter into the ecosystem such green plants it it become the food of the herbivores so the herbivores are the animals they a feed on the green plants for their food so uh, there is the herbivores they feed or they are grazing the primary producers and the herbivores become the food of the fast carnivore so here we take some example for example uh, in case of grassland ecosystem in grassland ecosystem we find the grasses such grass become the food of the grasshopper and the grasshopper again become the food of the toad and toad become the food of the snake again the grass become the food of the rat and rat become the food of the snake and snake become the food of the pup and like this another food chain may be there the grass which become the food of the cow and cow grazing the sorry the cow grazing the grasses and gra the cow become the food of the tiger and like this the grass may grazing by the Uh, by the rabbit 
and such rabbit become may become the food of the man and man become food of the food of the tiger so there is the several so uh, there are so many types of food chain in the grassland this is one food chain this is another food chain there is another food chain this is another food chain so in grassland we find uh, these are the four number of the food chains and all starts from the green plants or the producers and uh, and the sustainability of such food chain depends on the influx of the solar energy and another may be the another food chain may be the for example in forest ecosystem in forest ecosystem the plants become or the plant products become the food of the deer and they become the food of the lion this is the one food chain another may be the plants they are the food of the deer so deer feed on the plants and such deer may be the food of the tigers and the plants they may be the food of the goats and goats may be the food of the tigers so in forest ecosystem uh, here i mentioned only one two three three number of food chains are there so this is the uh, this food chain may develop because of the grazing or starts from the grazing of the uh, plants by the deer so that's why these are known as the grazing food chain so here i may mention another example uh, maybe the forest ecosystem in sorry in pond ecosystem in pond ecosystem in pond there are so many phytoplanktons these are the green plants phytoplanktons means green algae so these phytoplanktons prepare the food and such food and the phytoplanktons are the food of the zooplanktons and such zooplanktons are the food of the small fishes and small fishes become the food of the big fishes so this is another food chain in the pond so uh, this is the common thing is that the grazing food chain which start from the green plants and the first step may grazing by the the grass grazing by the grasshopper the grass grazing by the rabbit or the cow plants grazing by the deer so uh, uh, it is general in that the grazing food chain starts from the green plants and it depends on the influx of the solar energy now come to the detritus food chain detritus food chain detritus food chain this food chain which start from the dead organic matter or this food chain it depends on the influx of the dead organic matter or it depends on the only organic matter and it uh, not directly depend on the influx of the solar energy so the very good example is the mangrove forest the leaves which fall from the mangrove plants and the fallen leaves become the or the fragments of the leaves of the mangrove plants become the
food of the crabs and such crabs they become the food of the insects larvae and these insects larvae become the food of the grass shrimps and these grass shrimps become the food of the mice seeds and such mice seeds eaten by the nematodes and these nematodes again are further eaten by the amphipods and these amphipods become the food of the bivalve mollusk bivalve mollusk and these bivalve mollusks become the food of the another member the small fishes and these small fishes become the uh, food of the big fishes and such big fishes or the small fishes it may be the food of the uh, fish eater birds is eater birds so uh, there is the longest uh, food chain in the mangrove forest because of the fallen or the rotten leaves of the mangrove become the food of the crabs then subsequently uh, the crabs become the food of the insects larvae then grass shrimps then my seeds then nematodes and nematodes eaten by the amphipods then amphipods eaten by the bivalve mollusk then bivalve mollusks become the food of the small fishes then subsequently goes to the fish eater birds so this food chain which is, this is known as the detritus food chain detritus it means it starts from the detritus substance detritus organic substance and it less depend on the influx of the solar energy and here i would like to mention one thing that in the ecosystem in nature uh, uh, the operation or the regulation of such the sequence of the single sequence of food chain it is not possible the so many food chains all are interlinked with each other and which forms the interlocking pattern and which is known as the food web so in my another video i will discuss about the food web if you like then click on my another video regarding the food web thank you for watching